Okay, so our next set of questions is going to be coming from permutation and combinations. Okay, so but before I take this question, I need to give you an introduction, I give you a little big note on what is combination and what is what permutation. Okay, now but you cannot understand the concept of combination. Let me write it down: combination, okay, and permutation. Without first of all understanding the concept of factorials, okay. So I'm going to talk about what factorials are, okay. Now in factorials, it is just using the symbol exclamation, okay, using the exclamation symbol. Now factorials are just a mathematical way or symbol that we normally use to represent the product of consecutive numbers in descending order. Now what do I mean by that? Now, if I have a number like 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, all these numbers are consecutive but in a descending order, okay? So, if I don't want to waste my time to write all this down, there is a shorter way of writing this. And what is that shorter way? By saying 5 factorial, okay? Now, this is not 5 exclamation. It is called 5 factorial. So, the symbol here is your factorial. So, anytime you see this symbol as a mathematician, it means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then if I see 6 factorial, 6 factorial simply means 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay? And again, if I see something like, let's say, 3 factorial, 3 factorial simply means 3 times 2 times 1. Okay? Now, since we understand the concept of factorial now, I want you to take note of this. Anytime you're solving factorials, there are two things you need to take note of. And what are those things? You need to know that 0 factorial is equal to 1 and that 1 factorial is also equal to 1. So 0 factorial is equal to 1, 1 factorial is equal to 1. Of course, there are proofs for this, but that is not in this video. Okay, so that is basically what you need to know about factorials, okay? So for example, a question can say you should evaluate. Let's assume a question says evaluate uh, maybe 5 factorial divided by 4 factorial, okay? 5 factorial over 4 factorial. Now, how do I go about it? I can explain and tell them that this is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 all over 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now you see that 4 cancels 4, 3 cancels 3, 2 cancels 2, 1 cancels 1. And then we are left with what? 5. So our answer here just becomes 5, as simple as that. Okay? But in your exam, there is a shorter way of going about it. Instead of writing all these numbers this way, why don't you just tell them that 5 factorial is equal to 5 times 4 factorial. Okay? Then all over 4 factorial. So as easy as that, this cancels this and you get 5. Now, what if the question says 7 factorial over, let's say, 5 factorial, okay? In order to save our time, don't write down the complete value of 7 factorial. Just simply tell them 7 times 6, then times 5 factorial. Why am I stopping here? Because my denominator can easily cancel out. So, all over 5 factorial, this cancels this, and we are left with 7 by 6. And 7 by 6 is what? 42. Okay, and this gives us 42, as simple as that. Okay, that is what factorials are all about. And of course, we are going to use factorials in our combination and permutation. So back to those words. Let's start with permutation first of all. When we use the word permutation, okay, when we use the word permutation, you should know that permutation simply means to arrange. To arrange. That is what the word permutation means. Okay, of course, in questions, they won't tell you that um, in how many ways can this be permuted? You they don't use the word permutation, okay? Why? Because they already know that telling you that permutation, you might know what to do, so they will just use to arrange. All you need to know is that to arrange is the same as saying what? Permutation. Okay? Now, we are going to look at permutation in two ways. The first way we are going to look at permutation is when we have equal number of data and spaces. By equal number of data and spaces, I mean this. Whenever we have a question like this, let's say we have three letters, A, B, C, okay? A, B, C as a letter of the alphabet. And they're asking us, in how many ways can these letters be arranged? In how many ways can these letters be what? Arranged. Now, let's look at that arrangement. Of course, it is going to be a permutation problem, okay? Now, let's see if we can write out the whole arrangement of these letters, A, B, C. So, what are we going to have? 
Of course, A, B, C is already a first arrangement. Okay, these are our first arrangements. Let's look at another arrangement. I can see another arrangement is um A, C, B. Okay, another arrangement can be B, A, C. Another arrangement can be what? C, A, B. Another arrangement can also be okay. Let's see what we don't have here and see what we can include. Okay, we can have C, B, A. We can have C, B, A. Another arrangement can also be what again? Okay, let's say we have A, C, B. A, C, B. Okay, we have A, C, B. We have um. Okay, what don't we have here? Let's see. Let me check. We have A, B, C. We have. Do we have C, B, C, A? Okay, we have C, B, A. We have A, C, B. We have B, A, C. We have C, A, B. Okay, and then we also have B, C, A. Okay, so that is the next thing we don't have. Now, how many arrangements do we have here? We have one, two, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we have six arrangements. Six arrangements. Okay? Six arrangements. As simple as that. Now, you can also notice that if I increase the number of letters, let's assume we now have A, B, C, D. Okay? If I increase the number of letters, you see that the number of arrangements will also what? Change. The number of arrangement will also change okay we don't have the time to start analyzing all this but you should know that it is going to we are going to have a number a given number of arrangements okay now if you want to solve this kind of questions in your exam all you just need to do is count the number of letters and put your factorial and that is your answer okay so if i wanted to solve this question of course i would not go and start analyzing this way all I need to do is count the number of letters, one, two, three. So my answer becomes three factorial ways. And three factorial means three times two times one. Three times two is six, six times one is six. So we get the same thing. So in this question where we have A, B, C, D, if we're asked about the number of ways of arranging this, then you will see that the answer should be what? Four factorial. It should be four factorial, meaning four times three times two times one. And four times three is 12 times 2 is 24, times 1 is also 24. So we're going to have 24 ways. Okay? Now, let me now make it more interesting. Let's say we have the word, um, let's assume we have the word prime. Okay? We have the word prime. P-R-I-M-E. We have the word prime. So in how many ways can the letters of this word be arranged? All I need to do is count the number of letters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I have five factorial ways. In some questions, you will see your answer this way, while in most, you will see it in what? In the evaluated form, which is five times four times three times two times one. Okay? This is 20, 60, 120. So you have 120 ways. Okay? Now, don't get too excited yet because in some cases, the letters can what? Repeat. Okay? Now, but anytime the letters repeat, all you just need to do is what? Divide by the number of repetitions. What do I mean by that? Let's assume we have the word correct. Correct. Okay? In how many ways can the letters of this word be arranged? Now, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have seven factorial ways, but don't conclude that this is your answer. Why? Because we have the hours. The hours repeated themselves. How many times? Twice. We have R into two places. So I will divide by two factorial. Okay? If there's any other letter that repeats, then what happens? I will now put the number of repetition. So my answer becomes seven factorial over two factorial ways. And that is our answer. Okay? Now, one more example. Let's say we have the word mathematics. Okay? Mathematics. In how many ways can these guys be arranged? Okay? All I need to do is count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I have 11 factorial all over. I have repetitions here. 1, 2. So M has twice. So we have 2 factorial. We are not done yet. Let's go to A. A appeared twice again. So we have 2 factorial. And then T appeared 1, 2. Twice again. Any other repetition? I don't think so. No other repetition, so this becomes our answer. 11 factorial all over. 2 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial. Okay? So that is one aspect of um, permutation, which is when we have even number of spaces and uh, data. Okay? Now, 
a, another example or another aspect of um, permutation is when you have a given number of data but you have limited spaces what do i mean by that let's assume that at a birthday party okay the celebrant invited five people okay he invited five people for the birthday and because he invited five persons he placed only five seats so that means that at the birthday party you have only five seats for the five persons you invited but those five persons were coming to the party now maybe one of them now brought three persons so meaning that at the party we now have a total of what eight people at the party so what happens you see that no matter how those eight people try to arrange themselves on those seats three persons will still have no seats okay so no matter how you try to arrange those eight people on those five available seats three people will still stand as simple as that so that is the case where we have more number of data but limited word space now let's see how to attempt those kind of questions all we now need to use is the permutation formula okay we have a formula for permutation and what is the formula for permutation we have that n permutation r okay the r should be here now what does n permutation r means it simply means in how many ways okay can n items be arranged if there are available spaces okay in how many ways can n items be arranged if there are available spaces so in that kind of question let me give you the question with that birthday party again okay so it should be in how many ways can eight people be arranged if there are five seats available okay so the formula for permutation is going to be n factorial over n minus r all factorial okay so you must always know now some students they will be very confused on the one to use for n and the one to use for r always note this that n must be greater than what r if you're very sure it is a permutation problem or even combination problem always take note that the one on top must always be higher than the one below so if i have eight and i have five and i'm confused the one that should be n and the one that should be r always remember this that n must be greater than what r so n is eight and then r is what five okay so this is our permutation problem now if i have let's say eight permutation five how do we evaluate eight permutation five according to the formula it is going to be eight factorial over eight minus five all factorial if i break this down i'm going to have eight factorial over eight minus five gives us three of factorial so i have eight factorial over three factorial that is what eight permutation five simply means okay so let me give this question okay let's say that the question says in how many ways okay can seven people be arranged in four seats okay in how many ways can seven people be arranged in what four seats now the first thing i need to do is to determine if it is a permutation or a combination problem and of course the key word there is arrange okay in how many ways can seven people be arranged in what in four seats so arrangement means permutation so i simply tell them that since i have seven people but i have only four available seats meaning it is going to be seven permutation four and seven permutation four becomes seven factorial over seven minus four all factorial and this gives me seven factorial over seven minus four is three factorial okay so that is uh, just that okay now let me see if uh, there is an available question here from the past question okay um let's say we have um okay um in page 318 of your past question in page 318 of your past question um that was um in 2019 UNTH second exam okay the question was number 17 in how many ways can the word mathematics be arranged i think we've solved that already in the previous section okay we solved it already and then we'll get um 11 factorial over 2 factorial 2 factorial 2 factorial okay so but if you look at the options they are expecting you to evaluate to the height to the least number so you have to break this guy down to 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 all that so you have to multiply that all through 
Okay? Good. So with that in mind, let's now look at some combination problems so that we can combine everything and get our results. Okay? Now, whenever we talk about combination, when we use the word combination, okay, the key word is combination. Now, combination simply means selection. Combination is selection, okay? So we are no longer arranging, we are now what? Selecting. These two things are different things entirely, okay? So in combination, we are selecting. You just choose the items, but in permutation, you what? After choosing, you arrange, just like that, okay? Now, whenever we talk about combination, you should also know that the combination formula is NCR, okay? Just like we have NPR, which means any permutation R, okay? This one means any combination R. And then if I want to read this in a mathematical statement, it means in how many ways can any items be selected if we have only R available spaces? Okay? If you don't want to put it that way, you can simply say in how many ways can R items be selected if there are n available what, items. It is just like when we have, um, let's say I have five letters, A, B, C, D, E. So I have five letters of the alphabet. And they ask me, in how many ways can uh, I select maybe a consonant sound? Okay, so I'm selecting a consonant sound from these five letters. I'm selected, so I'm taking only consonant sound out of these letters. And I know the consonant sounds are B and um, D. So B, D, and also C is also a consonant. So I'm selecting three items out of how many available items? Five available words, items. So our formula for combination is N factorial over N minus R of factorial, then N R words, factorial okay so anytime i'm using the combination formula it is n factorial all over n minus r factorial r factorial so with that in mind what do you think five combination three will look like five combination three will look like five factorial over five minus three all factorial three factorial okay so that we're gonna have five factorial over two factorial three factorial so when you simplify this you get this okay so we're going to look at the past question because there are so many questions most questions from the nursing past questions are on the word combination because they think it's students actually find it difficult to solve combination problems so they try to capitalize on that now if you look at um page if you look at um page um 311, page 311 in the first exam, okay? In the first exam, um, Federal Schools of Nursing, that is on page 311, um, question number 27. Question number 27, they said, in how many ways can a committee of four be selected from six women? In how many ways can a committee of four be selected from six women? Of course, the key word there is what? Select. The key word is select. So whenever you hear the word select, don't think of any other thing but what? Combination. So they said, in how many ways can six, okay? In how many ways can a committee of four be selected from six women? So I'm going to tell them any combination R, of course our formula is N factorial over N minus R, or factorial, R what? Factorial. Now you need to know this, that of course, in combination, if you are confused on which one should be 4 and which one should be 6, always remember N must be greater than what? R. So I just simply tell them N is 6, R is 4. So 6 combination 4. Let's evaluate. So we have 6 factorial over 6 minus 4, all factorial, 4 factorial. Breaking it down, we're going to have 6 factorial over 2 factorial, 4 factorial. Okay, so of course, let's simplify for that because our answers are not this way. Now, 6 factorial can be written as 6 times 5 times 4 factorial. Remember what I told you? All over 2 factorial, 4 factorial. You see that 4 factorials can cancel 4 factorials. 6 times 5 gives us 30. All over 2 factorial means 2 times 1. And 2 times 1 is 2. So 30 divided by 2 gives us what? 15. So we have 15 ways, 15 ways. 
Okay? Another question, so that I'm sure you've gotten that. Another question is on page 120. Page 120 of your not saying past question. Page 120, question number 13. 13, sorry. Question number 13. They said, in how many ways can two students be selected from a group of five students in a debating competition? In how many ways can two students be selected from a group of five students in a debating competition? Okay, so for that debating competition, they are selecting two students out of five students. The key word is select. So selection means what? Combination. And then, so I will tell them five combination two, and that gives us five factorial over five minus two of factorial, two factorial. Okay, so this becomes 5 factorial over 5 minus 2 is 3 factorial, 2 factorial. We simplify. 5 factorial gives us 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. I will stop here because of my denominator. Over 3 factorial, 2 factorial. This cancels this. 5 times 4, we have 20. Over, we know 2 factorial should be 2 times 1, which is 2. And this gives us what? 10 ways. 10 ways. So we have 10 ways of doing that. Okay? So visit your past question and look for more questions on that. If you have any question or maybe any area of doubt, just comment on the comment section below. Welcome to my dreams academy.